Hello everyone and welcome to the RNG University. Today we are going back and trying out the Bant Super Friend deck again. I made a little bit of modification since the Meat Hook uh, ban meta. Uh, now uh, I'm putting in more creatures to kind of uh, stop the early game aggro that a lot of decks are really known for uh, today. And I'm running four Gala Greeters, four Llanowar Lone Speaker, and two Denic Pious, Pi uh, Pious Apprentice. So a lot of two drops in the early game just to stabilize and get that good mana advantage in if needed. Denic is very good at gaining life, so that's also good against the burn decks. I only have two, so that's why I didn't run four. Otherwise, I might consider running four Denic and maybe cutting down a Lano War and one Gallagreeters. Uh, these are also very good at getting... Uh, free mana later on in the game and also for gallop readers also life and also put some counter to try to snowball but really that's not what matters in this deck i have to make this appear to uh kind of counter any big drops that i need to stop my opponent from making something like an invoke despair but really to make this appear just there as a placeholder for any sort of good old counter spell uh because we're in blue we have to have some form of counter spell in my opinion all right and then we have four wedding announcements to get you know one one out and for broker's ascendancy just to have that super friend kind of in play right this ascendancy is really good uh for or broker's ascendancy i should say it's really good for all the uh super friends with a little uh loyalty lo loyalty counters i think that's what they're called so three wandering emperor because we can't really fit four in the deck uh two to fairies because the fairy is extremely good for uh ulting with the broker's ascendancy we have one elspeth two ren and two uh, tamio as the remaining planeswalker but also a urza assembles a titan to uh, fetch out our planeswalker if necessary and a timeless lotus just one to try to synergize with the fairy if necessary but it's just really good on its own if we can get it on the board uh with all of our ramp and mana advantages. Then we have two farewell because we do need field clings and farewell is an extremely good field cling in a planeswalker heavy deck. And to storm the festival to get that late game card advantage that we can do twice, right? Six mana for the first storm and 10 mana for the second storm. Then 24 lands, the good usual type of lands, a Gonjo, Ottawara, Poseju, and a forest for all of that green goodness for a Dakar Waste for Deserted Peach. Uh, one overgrown farmland, two dream, uh, dream root cascade again because I don't have that many, and I want to go and craft these lands for uh, Yavi Maya's coast and for Spara headquarter. Uh, I thought about replacing the Plaza of Heroes, but I do have a Denic that is a legendary creature, and these are all legendary permanents that could be cast uh, with the Plaza of Heroes. So it's not a bad idea to have uh, at least one Plaza of Heroes, but more than one is probably not good because it cannot help us cast. Things like Storm the Festival, things like Broker's Ascendancy that uh, do require sort of either a, a triple of mana, a triple different color of mana, or you know three of the same color, and Plaza of Hero might hurt if I have too many uh, on, in play. All right, so that's the play style. I'm not sure if this is a good deck. I, I looked, I did a little bit of research online, and, and I did not see this in the current meta at all in a lot of the sites that post their net decks. So uh, maybe we're onto something. Maybe it's Maybelline. Let's find out what, uh, how good this deck is. All right, let's go to home. We're going to play. Uh, that is not what we want. Not midweek. Uh, where, where do we go? Oh, it's right here. All right, so we want to go to, I believe here is ranked. And we want to go to our, uh, where is that deck? Just made it. All right, we call this the Bent Friends because uh, those are our only friends we can make when playing Magic Arena. They won't let us really have any spectate mode for whatever reason. So uh, we're going against Pao Miao. That's fun. We got to go first with three Gala Greeters. Oh dear. Let's keep. That is an insane opener. Uh, let's start with the Spara Headquarter. I really wonder how they're going to reprint these lands because, well, you know, uh, yeah, you're going to be in a video. Uh, these uh, Spara Headquarters, uh, if they reprint, they have to go back to Capanna because Spara is in Capanna, right? Uh, oh, fourth Gallagher. Okay, well. I thought about putting the Ascendancy there, but it's probably better to get out as much mana as we can from these... Uh, greeters because that's what they do uh and then we can summon two next turn and just really snowball and i don't know what our opponent's gonna do with this kind of board fable okay well you got a fable i guess that's nice for you uh what if we have gala greeter 
I would create a tap treasure token and a tap treasure token. I know we'll play another Gallagher. And this one, you cannot create a tap, so we'll put a plus one plus one on it. You cannot create a token, so we'll put a plus one on it. And this one, we can create a tap treasure token. So we will create a tap treasure token. Alright, so, and then we can. Can we go save you? Oh no, this is just a land to play. So, let's see how our opponent wants to block. It does not want to block. We'll play Poseidon you out. I wonder where our opponent is going to go with this now. This is a pretty scary board. And we, we did hit some insane draws, but it really depends on what we draw next, right? Alright, so it's an enchantment deck. I have no respect for those kind of decks because they just net deck and they don't really have to think. But they kind of fit red in, so good for them, I guess. There's that going. There's a 2-2 Kami of Transients. It's probably going to attack to get a... Uh, I don't know why he didn't attack first. He can play Katilda. Treasure token. We have three. We only have one. We're winning that treasure war. Second Kami. Uh, we now have another Sparrow Headquarter. I think we might want to cycle this. So let us just play our Broker's Ascendancy. They tap themselves out. So uh, we will. Yeah, hey, what, what if we don't attack? So we look like an aggro deck, but we actually are a control deck. So uh, the early aggro sort of board advantage really is just there to uh, make our opponent commit. Then we can farewell them. I guess that's the play now since our draw has not been that good. Kami of Transient. We can take some damage too. Gallagher can also gain life. Alright. You do you. Probably gonna attack. Oh, no attack. Okay. Well, let's cycle. The longer the game goes, the better it is for us because our deck snowballs. Unfortunately, though, we're not drawing very well. Uh, we're drawing a decent amount. But the draws that we're, we're making are huh, kind of questionable. Now we're getting these big Gallagher to greet them. Uh, they're growing by two every turn, so if they want to attack us, at least we have good blockers. And once our Gallagher is exhausted, then we have a farewell for them. Hopefully we draw lands though, because... Um, yeah. Okay, he's casting Katilda on the uh, Goblin. We'll counter it. No Goblin for you. Well, no Katilda for you. You can have the Goblin. Autowara. Probably have to play it though. But I, there is an idea in uh, casting the Autowara or using the Autowara on our Gallagher just so they have another creature in play. But that's probably dumb. We'll grow by two. Our opponent grows by one. Uh, unless they play two spells. They want a card draw. This is what happens when none of us have a, a good field clean card and uh, everyone's just trying to card draw them, themselves to death. I don't have that much card draw in the deck though, so that, that is questionable. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, we spent the treasures and then did not use the treasure on anything good. Really just to get an additional card draw that one turn. Although our farewell will probably have some good things to say about the board. But we do have to exile all enchantments as well, since they have a lot of enchantments as creatures. And they're getting a, a 
heck load of card advantage on us. Look at that, 46 to 35. So uh, that card advantage is probably going to snowball out of control against us, unfortunately. But at least our broker's ascendancy is able to uh, list out the amount of creatures that we have. Oh, geez, these are 7-7. Seven, seven. So um, if you choose to attack, we're going to have to block. He's not attacking, that, so that's fine. Uh, another brokers. This is a. Uh, this is not turning out fine. So we've been having really bad draws for the last few turns, but at least we have a big board. Uh, they eventually our opponent will have enough creatures on the board that will overrun us because they're going wide. We're going tall, right? And a good thing about us going tall and them going wide is that we have a answer to a wide board. Uh, Unfortunately, oh, okay, that's that's okay for us. That's actually good for us, depending on what he what he exiles. A Gallagher. So we not only have a one ten ten, now we don't have any ten ten. Uh, we need to draw a land next turn. So that's what this game is saying. But if we want to attack, we will trade. Uh, it is not good for us to trade, but it is. Okay, so now we are not even trading. We need to top deck the land. That's uh, a very important part of the next turn. Also, if they have a counter spell, I think we just lose. Oh well, they're, they're not running. Uh, they're not running black, so there's there's no need for that. There's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. We will die if we don't uh, block both of them. So we'll have to. Ow, 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 ow. That really hurts, guys. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that to a fellow magic player. What's wrong with you? Katilda, the down heart, okay. A 14, 14. We need to top deck the land. We do, so... Alright, I guess the, now the choice is are we going to take out enchantments as well and take our own broker's ascendancy? Uh, we do get our Gallagher back. So, there is a call for that. I guess we will have to do that. So, everything gone. None of that, none of that, none of any of your cards, but we get our Gallagher's. Let us greed. Okay, you draw a car. But that's gone too. All gone. Okay, so um, the question is do we want a tap treasure token or plus one plus one counter? We have been kind of low on mana the whole game. So let's just get the treasure tokens. We can gain life later and all that other stuff. Our opponent's probably gonna overload the board again. There it goes. Yeah, these kind of decks only have one dimension of play, which is not fun, uh, in my opinion, to play. I don't know. Is that another spell? Okay, he's going to draw two cards. And we get a land. So, yep. Do I even want to play this land? I don't really have any pitch. So, that's what happens to a lot of these games, you know. We draw the wrong side of our deck, our opponent draws the right side of their deck, and we lose. But then again, they only have 23 cards left, and we have 40, 43. So they did draw a lot more than us because we just let them have it. Another Fable, huh? Yeah, at least we have a lot of lands. We'll take whatever attack they can hit. They're gonna dish on us. No reason to give up our Gallagher. And all we draw are lands, so time to quit. GG. That was not fun. That was really frustrating because I think we lost to not to our opponent's play or even to their deck. We just lost to our deck. Our deck decided uh, we need to draw four Gallagher and every single one of our lands rather than any of the Planeswalker uh, or of Storm the Festival. And if that happens, I don't, I don't think we can ever win. Because remember, we're a bent super friend deck. The, uh, the little critters in the beginning is just to help us ramp out. Are we playing against the Pedals? Uh, oh, the Pedro. Pedro de Ledro, or whatever his name is. The opponent goes first. I have no two drops, but we have a three drop, so... 
Uh, you should mulligan for two drops in this deck. All right, we're gonna keep six. I guess we'll put back a Altowara. Yeah, we'll put back in. We'll put back an Altowara. All of these cards, they're iffy because I. It really depends on what our opponent plays, but we do need to have uh, two draw for Denik. Uh, let's just make this appear. Okay, it's not. It's a zombie deck. What? Yeah, it's a zombie deck. I'm not really that afraid. Let's put out the Gallagher first. Opponent always goes first. That's kind of the, the way these games go. It's gonna attack us for two. Or oh, cut down our Gallagher. That's mean. That's very mean. You shouldn't do that. Whatever. What has our Gallagher ever done to you? He just greeted you. All right, wedding announcement time. Is it time for chumps? Probably not. I don't know how many choices we get. Our non token zombie dies, create a 2 2. Alright, so we have to use our chumps to block that. Uh, this is Death Touch. Okay, so now we could play the Emperor and exile his Tainted Adversary, or exile his Blade Stitch Scab, or we can put out a Denik in King's on Life. I think it's better to have the Emperor. It's always better to have the Emperor, right? I, I'm pretty sure that's the case. Uh, on the other hand, though, I'm not really quite sure where all this is going. Zombies, you can draw it flying. Yeesh. Okay. Now we have a problem. I'm not overconfident. This removes four power. This is what you get for which hurting my people. Helps a little bit. Well, I have to assemble and play it uh, badly with an assemble. No, I mean, uh, he's gonna attack and swing and kill my emperor, right? So if I assemble, I will be able to use the ability twice, pull up a swamp song counter on this, and exile his headless rider. So then he's only his uh, smaller board doesn't hurt me as much. I guess I can do that. I don't like it that much, but hey, it is what it is. Let me read ahead. What does chapter 3 say? Honestly, I can also put another Pokemon on counter on it. No, that's that's probably bad. I need to gain some life because I am dying. My judgment is final. Your judgment is fine, but my card draw ability is a little better. Head fairy. Okay, so. With the fairy and five mana, I can put out Denik. This attack will hurt, but when another zombie enters the battlefield, and then he's got Jadar. Oh, geez, thank thankfully we drew the right card. So let's go for a damage first. Does he want to block? No. Then. Farewell to all creatures and all graveyards. I don't think there's any artifacts to worry about. Yep. Alright, we scrape by just a little bit. Let's see if our opponent explodes. No, it's gonna exploit and make us lose life. No, okay, good. So now we can fairy. Gain a little bit of life. Untap artifact. Creature and let's say uh, this land's gonna it's kind of dumb. I'm gonna have to take take damage even with Denik. But Denik does what Denik do. Slowly gain back life with Teferi, and if he kills Denik, he at least he can't kill Teferi in the same turn. I don't I don't think. 
So yeah, we need our Planeswalkers in the deck to really do stuff. But this time, we did not draw any ramp. All right? Uh, we, draw, we drew a Gallagher, I guess. It just died. If you attack, I'm gonna block. I don't care about Denik. I care about that life. Attack the fairy. Block four to fairy. Gain three life. Thank you. Denik is gonna come back. One, two, three, four, five, six. Another foul stinger. Oh, who did, who saw that coming? You should probably exploit and try to get lands. Playing off three lands is not very good. Yep. Good job. There's your fourth land. See? That was the right play. Okay, so if I play this, do I even have green? I don't have green. I have to take two just to play red and seven, huh? Well. Happens to be something I needed. Let's create a tree folk. Untap an artifact. I don't have a creature, but I will untap this land right here. You're really just gaining the life here. But there's an AA on the board, so you better have some death touch. Or that AA is going to eat you alive. Sorry. Okay. That's not going to help at all. Violence is necessary. I can you just tap it down. Deal with this annoyance. Okay, let's play our Denik. That way, when we plus four, we might get some clue. One land, no clue. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. Okay, we can drop our land here. And now we will... Oh, shoot. I meant to use the fairy first. Oh well. Let's see what happens. You want to block? For Soren? I doubt it. You do? Okay. Got it. Then the fairy will do his thing. Untap an artifact. I don't have that. Untap a creature. I do have that. Untap a land. I have that. I can protect Denik. Tap four last turn to draw a card this turn. I'm not sure how good that is. Could be invoke. Could be invoke. It's not. It's talking new. Cost four to use that ability, and then it will have one la uh, one mana left, and I already exiled most of his stuff. So I don't know what this deck was supposed to do, but whatever it's supposed to do is not doing it very well. Bring back champion to perish just to be able to play it. I guess that's the thing. I'm not gonna judge, although I'm secretly judging. But I'm not gonna judge. Well, thanks for the clue. I'm gonna crack that. Play a land, okay? Pass turn. Active ability. Lone speaker. Cycle. Wandering Emperor. Very good. All right, let's uh, let's get the, the fairy ult out of the way. This game is pretty, pretty much over once the fairy ults, and we will Denic attack, attack you for nine. Now you're a six. Uh, let us draw some lands. One land, two land. Oh, that's not land. Okay. So we will put the Spar Headquarter out. We'll put out the Land War Lone Speaker. How many do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We will have 10 mana next turn, so we don't need to put the second Lone Speaker out. We get a free card draw for the Teferi emblem. And now we're going to have 23 uh, cards to their 43. I don't know how I can come back from this. But opponent's going to try. 
Not exploiting. Not doing anything. Uh, I'm just gonna go to my turn. All right, well, it goes to my turn. I can storm the festival now. I will do just that. Response. I don't know if that was mislethal, honestly, because uh, there are reasons to not play, you know, the... Uh, to not play the uh, Storm's Festival and just attack with Emperor in hand. That could be a good effect, but I think it's better to just attack like this. Right, he can block with the Fell Stinger to kill our 10-10. wants to do that. We can make another 10-10. He has to block. We're not trampling, but we can keep making these because of uh, Broker's Ascendancy. We're not getting a lot of interaction cards, which, you know, is what, what makes the Fairy Token or Emblem so good. But we have Wandering Emperor. That's pretty much going to lock down the game anyways. And there we go. Opponent quits. We win the game. That's Tell you the power of the bent super friend is to have your super friend, uh, you know, in your hand or in play. Which their first game was just four, uh, it was just four, uh, what is it called, Gallic readers and nothing else. The bang of my Capenna's existence was Gallic readers. A stupid box topper. I don't know if it's a good car or a bad car. I've seen it being used very effectively, but it really comes up to, you know, what comes afterwards. All right, we get to go first. We got Spara into Yavimaya Coast, into Desert Beach. I think that's a good play, depending on our opponent's hand. Okay, they're Rafine. So, Esper Attacker, Esper Control deck. They're gonna have to make this a pure mana up. They do not. Well, that's a mistake for them. Not having make this appear to my four mana play means say hello to the fairy. Not only that, I can tap your artifact, untap a creature, untap a land, and now say hello to second lone speaker. I can storm the festival next turn. This is so scary. That was an insane opening for me. For our opponent, it's basically a, a, a joke. Alright, so I guess we'll auto Aura and we'll storm the festival. We'll get a time a timeless lotus and a wedding announcement. Alright, we'll get to untap. Alright, our opponent quits. GG. We didn't even do anything. It was just a scary opening. By getting the proper card draw. And that's what happens with these kind of decks, you know, uh, it's... Scary open, opener, scary starts. Alright, so, yeah, that's all I'm gonna do for today. We, we played three games, really, but uh, I really want to talk about the, the deck a little bit uh, after looking at what the play style was. The first game was grueling because we didn't draw any of the Planeswalkers, and all we drew were just the Gallic Readers, not even the Lone Speakers. At least the Lone Speaker can turn lands into creatures. Alright, but the play style is try to hit your mulligan hard into a 2-drop to be able to get some mana advantage and hit some of your Planeswalkers if you have the Temple uh, on the board. If you don't, Wedding Announcement is pretty good for helping you stay that off and Broker's Ascendancy will definitely help you grow your creatures into something insanely big and then help your Planeswalker trying to get their ult. Make sure you have Planeswalker with very good ultimate. The Fairy is one of the best ultimate in the game. Uh, just to have that simple card advantage every single turn is going to grind your opponent out, but you also untap all of your lands on your opponent's turn so that you can have interactive plays, but also have the uh, confidence to play the cards that you want during your turn. Right? The very old is something that I just cannot believe they made. It's just uh, it's a Seymour Muse in uh, infinitely in play. Right? You cannot remove that. Uh, another thing that I didn't really get to show off that I really think is an amazing ability is Tamiyo's minus X. Uh, basically, what you can do is minus X on a wedding announcement in the graveyard, and you'll have a wedding announcement that never flips. 
it will tick every turn, but it will never flip, meaning that you can constantly get one once, or if you have two attackers in play, you can constantly get card draws. It's an amazing ability that I've seen last time when I played this deck that definitely uh, needs to be noted. Do not uh, hinge your win con on Storm the Festival. It's not a Storm the Festival deck that always wins by it. It's just an extra uh, extra little oomph to help you uh, get through that hump if you need to. But the game uh, really hinges on getting Teferi or Tamio out to get those uh, really good effects. And then uh, Broker's Ascendancy to grow your creatures if you can. That's how you win a lot of these games. Alright, that's what I got for today. Thank you very much for joining me and I will see you guys next time.